The Holy Spirit is not in you to control your spirit. He is in you to control you. All of you. That's what he says. Glorify God in your body, your physical, and in your spirit, which are God's. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, and it reads, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were brought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. We are living to glorify God. That's the reason why we are here today again. Living to glorify God. We are pushing this forward because we want to understand who we are. I, I guarantee that if you don't understand, you cannot do what is required of you. I remember my teacher at school training will always come around from bench to bench. And he's one of those men that was very firm, but he was very a nice man at the same time. And when he comes around, they listen to what he has to say because if he... If you say that you understand, I'm sorry for you. He's going to leave you alone. Go to the next bench. You better have work to show at the end of the day that you understood what he said. So when we understand, I believe then that we can execute, we can live out, we can flesh out the things that God wants us to flesh out. When we don't have the knowledge, then we are in darkness. So we, we live it to glorify God. So Paul says that our bodies are a temple, not is a temple. He says, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit whom you have from God? So my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So my body is holy. And that's what we have to understand. Our bodies are holy. And all last week we looked at the power of God in our lives and that the power of God in our lives not only empowers the spiritual part of our lives, but he empowers everything about us. I want to look now at the holy aspect of our lives because God dwells in, in us now today and we have to understand what that really means and how we are supposed to carry ourselves. Now we looked last week too at the tabernacle, we looked at the temple, and then we look at ourselves. God moved from the tabernacle, he moved from the temple, and then he moved to us. Let's go back now to the tabernacle in Leviticus chapter 8, verse 10 to 12. We're looking today that the tabernacle and all that was in it were holy. The tabernacle and all that was in it were holy. It says here, also Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that was in it. He did what? He took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that was in it and consecrated them. What does the word consecrate means? It means to make holy or to set apart. So in this case now, this church here or this sanctuary was built for God. We call it the house of God. It was built for God. It wasn't built for video games. It wasn't built for horse racing. It wasn't built for, built for school. Even though school was in it sometimes, it was built as a house of God. It was consecrated or set apart for worship. Of this God. So if something is consecrated, it is holy or it is set aside for a particular use. So the tabernacle was anointed with oil and it was consecrated. He sprinkled some, some um, of it, of the oil on it, on the altar seven times. And he anointed the altar and all its utensils and the lever and its base to consecrate them. And he poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him and consecrated him. So Moses is anointing the tabernacle and all that was in it. So this building here that we have was, as I said before, dedicated to God. So the windows and the doors, and the doors are anointed. They were set apart. The lights that we have in here, the speakers that we have in here, all these things should be set apart for God. Now, this was not made by a Christian. 
This, this what I'm speaking through right now was made by some secular man. Microphone. This is set apart for God today. This is being used for God. Everything that we have in this building is set apart for God. The fan that is keeping you cool is set apart for God. These screens that we have here and the one behind here, these were not designed by Christian people. They were designed for the average person, but we have them in the house of God and they are set aside for God. They are holy. You following me? I want to read it one more time. Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle, the whole tabernacle, and all that was in it. So everything in the tabernacle is anointed and consecrated. He sprinkled some of the oil on it, on the altar, seven times, anointed the altar and its utensils. So all the altar, everything that was, was being used there, he anointed all of those things and he consecrated them. He poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him to consecrate him. It tells me something. Not only, not only um, the temple was holy, but persons working in the temple had to be holy as well. So the brother Aaron, who was the first high priest, was anointed because you're in a holy place, you have to be holy. You still here? So the tabernacle and all that was in it were holy. Exodus 14 and verse 9 says, And you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it, and you shall hollow it and its utensils, and it shall be holy. Again, repeating itself. Everything in the tabernacle was holy. Everything was set aside or set apart. Numbers chapter 7 and verse 1. It says, now it came to pass when Moses had finished setting up the tabernacle that he anointed it and consecrated it and all its furnishings and the altar and all its utensils and he anointed them and consecrated them. When he finished building, he anointed it and he consecrated it. This is the temple. Why? Because God want the temple, sorry, the tabernacle to be holy. So we have the tabernacle being holy, and now we have the temple as well. 1 Kings 9 and verse 3 says, The Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer to Solomon, and your supplication that you have made before me. I have consecrated this house, which you have built to put my name there forever. And my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. So the temple and all that was in the temple was holy. The tabernacle and all that was in tabernacle were holy. And we have to understand too that the body and all that is in it has to be holy. Don't forget, we are saying the progression. God moved from tabernacle to temple. And God is now saying that the temple that we are is holy. Repeat yourself, Pastor. The tabernacle was erected. It was holy. It was sanctified. The temple erected. It was sanctified. It was holy. The Bible is saying here now to us that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we are supposed to be holy and set apart just as the tabernacle and the temple were. Exactly. Psalms 103 verse 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is where within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord and all. All. So the same way how we have, I said there's now the doors and everything sanctified. The body is not made up of, one, it's not one organ. The body is made up of many parts. So everything about me is supposed to be holy. Everything about you is supposed to be holy. Because you have to understand something first of all, that God purchased you if you are Christian, and you should dedicate yourself to him. So the day that we became Christians is the day that we ceased being our own master. God purchased us. And now God has given us the anointing, the Holy Spirit, on the inside of us. And he's saying, bless me with all that you have. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Your bowels, man. Everything, God bless God. Everything. We here? The body and all that is in it is holy. Listen to this. It says here, for as the body before the spirit is dead, 
So faith without works is dead. Understand that your body is just a case carrying the real you. You know we have a phone, a nice phone or a cheap phone or what kind of phone? You buy a fancy case to put your phone in. That's true? Well, some of us do that. So you may have a nice phone or a cheap phone. You have a phone. And you put that phone in the case to protect, to protect the phone. Peter says, as long as I am in this tent, meaning the body, I will stir up your pure minds. He says, I will soon put off this tent, meaning his body. And the reason why he is saying that is because the real Peter and the real Jesus is the spirit on the inside of the person. I know we like to glorify the body, and you better do that too, because your body is a temple. Treat it well. Don't mark it up and scratch it up and do all kind of things with it and beat it up and that kind of stuff. It's a temple. Treat it well. But it says here, as the body before the spirit is dead, so faith before works is dead. Paul says here, for you were brought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Why he says body and spirit is because you, that I can see, there's a spirit on the inside of you. So the real Irene is a spiritual person. Let me use mom. But mom that we saw in church is not mom. That's mom's body. That's mom's tent. To be absent from the tent is to be present with God. So we were celebrating mom, having a funeral for mom, a send off for mom. Mom was present because she was no longer there in the body. She was absent from there. It's good to be absent and present. Well, God, bad for us, but good for God. So Paul is saying, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says, that we should present our bodies as living sacrifices. When you spread out your body as a living sacrifice, God has your spirit, God has your mind, God has everything about you. Everything, not a part of you. And I said last week, the Holy Spirit is not in you to control your spirit. He is in you to control you. All of you. That's what he says. Glorify God in your body, your physical, and in your spirit, which are God's. So all of me is to glorify God. This song says, he wants it all. God is saying, love me. Love me with your whole heart. He wants it all today. Serve me. Serve me with your life now. He wants it all today. God wants all. God is not a piece of God. God doesn't want a piece of you. God wants all of you. God wants all of me. So I'm saying to you, when he set up the tabernacle, he consecrated the whole tabernacle and all the utensils in there. Then when he dedicated the temple, he sanctified that and everything that was in there. God is saying, I want all of you as well. You know why? I purchased all of you, not piece of you. We still here, people? Glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Which are God. Which are God's, rather. So I say, watch what you watch. Watch what you watch. So our eyes then are part of us. We can't go through every part of us. And go through a couple to today and let you all go home. Watch what you watch. David says, I was set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the works of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. You have to watch what you watch. No. Nowadays, we live in a strange world, and the things that we have never seen in my life that are happening now, advertisements now had ladies kissing ladies, men kissing men, movie can't go good without somebody cursing somebody or somebody in the bed with somebody or somewhere with somebody. We have to understand that we have the power over the remote. I get it and turn off that. I was said nothing wicked before my eyes. That's what the Bible says. This is the standard for us. So I'm saying, if you are a temple, you cannot allow things that are not godly to fill your temple. Set nothing wicked before your eyes. Some of the things that people send you on your phone are not good things. You know that? You know that. 
And sometimes before you get too far, just delete it. Delete it. In other words, you may end up with David, people at Bathsheba, and before he just delete that, he can invite her to come. And all hell break loose. You following me? So, delete the thing quick before it catches you. So, watch what you watch. Watch what you play too. I've got to tell my children that many times. Play the games and stuff. You have freedom to play games, but understand that they got some games you can't play either. Some games not pretty. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to spell them out. I'm saying to you, if you're a temple of God, you have to understand that everything that you do is either blessing God or having God's spirit under pressure. Are you following me? You want that if you invite somebody into, into your space, that they feel comfortable in your space. God is in me. I must make sure that he feels comfortable in me, at home in me. So watch what you watch. And also keep your hands clean. This is not sanitizer. This is not soap. This is not what the Beijing's call squeezy. Cause for, for instance, you know, Beijing is a Beijing when every soap liquid is squeezy. <laughs> or breeze. Squeezy gone since I was a little boy, but it's still called squeezy. Whoa. That's a Beijing for you. Keep your hands clean. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, says the psalmist. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has recompensed me. Now, this is not only hands in the sense of my literal hands. This is my life. But we're talking about having a clean hands and a pure heart. So we, we, we want to that your hands too, because you've got to be careful with your hands, because you could be in, in a place working and things that are not yours may come home with you. <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? We don't want anybody's goods to be in your house. Remember what happened to Achan? Achan had some things that were not supposed to be in his house, and he caused Israel to be in trouble. No, we have to be careful. The Bible says, don't bring any accursed thing in your house, lest you become accursed like it. So you have to be careful. I remember something that I did that I don't normally do. These cars that you have nowadays comes with, come, come, come with um, donuts and not a spare tire. I don't understand where that came from at all. So you got a flat tire, you got this little foolish thing on your, on your, on your car. And I, I went to a place, an establishment, I won't call any names. And there was a guy there that normally puts on wheels and I asked him about a spare tire. He said he has one that he can sell me. No worries. I met him and I bought one from him. Feeling good. One night I drove and I going up, going to Ellerton playing field. Not Ellerton, sorry. Bethel, Draxall. Right, that playing field there. A bus was coming down, I pulled one side and the tire got hurt. How to get that fixed? One. I said, okay. Now, now, now I go in to Oberry, go towards the airport, and burps again, and the hole inside the rim broke off and it went down flat. I said, yes, Lord, talk, I, I, you're speaking to me. This is a hot tire that I got on my car. God is saying, I'll take this thing from off of your scar because it's not legal, it ain't good. Pelt it away. You went and buy something that is not right. That's the conclusion that I had. That that was something that, listen, I have never had any, I have four tires that the car came with and they're still on there today. That one was the only one that got hurt twice. Mash up, God said, take it off of this. I said, all right, Lord, I take it off permanently. I want clean hands. You got to be careful where you buy things from too now. You know what I mean? You may buy things and you feel it's a bargain and then only curse your house. Keep your hands clean. So basically watch your lifestyle and watch your dealings. Many persons come to me because I'm a joiner carpenter and they come with square. You want square, Wendell? Not from you. Man passed me, he built a house. He man passed me and man got a whole trunk full of cement. You want cement, Wendell? Not from you. I can visit this hardware store. Not you. My man got a whole steel. 
Not you. I keep my hands clean, boy. Yeah. Next to no, the part that my house that the part of the house that the cement get cast with no. <laughs> Begin to crumble or something. No, sir. I don't want that. Then I heard, then I heard further down about some cement that was stolen by some guys. And I kept my mouth shut. Hot cement. Not of the press. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. And if you know something is wrong and you get involved in it, you are guilty the same way. The person outside being the watch out person for the person inside the house stealing is guilty the same way as the person inside the house. You can't argue that you're not inside the house. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. And he has recompensed me. So God is going to bless you based on how you live. Don't forget you are a temple. Now I have one house. And this house has in my wife and my two children. I have one house. So Wendell has Wendell's a house. So if Wendell does something wrong, I can trouble my house. Because they're under me. I tell you. So I have to keep my hands clean to make sure that the wife is clean and my children are clean as well. Even the dog that barking outside clean. Because what I'm saying to you is that holiness is something that covers your house, covers your dwelling. It is, it is God is going to bless you because you are walking right. So you don't want that you do nonsense and then you interfere with your prosperity. That's why I don't cheat, I don't steal because I understand that my help comes from God. Don't allow your tongue to defile your temple. Don't allow your tongue to defile your temple. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 says, Do not use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Do not use foul language. Now, why would Paul write to the church of Jesus Christ, not the unsafe world? And why is Paul saying to the church, do not use foul or abusive language? Because the church has to understand who she is. She is holy. That's not your lifestyle. That's not your language. But pastor, it's just an expression. Yeah, it's a bad one. It's an abusive one. It's a foul expression. That's what it is. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Now, the brother James said a whole lot about the tongue, boy. A whole lot. James says the tongue is so great among our members that it defiles the whole body. Imagine that. That's what James says. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body. He's saying, listen, this one little small thing here in your mouth can, can, can cause your whole body to be defiled. Again, we are holy. You cannot defile your temple. That's the point I'm making. I went from the tabernacle to the temple to our temple. I've been trying to keep this temple clean and holy. So if your tongue can defile your whole body, it means then that you're making the temple that God has set aside for himself unholy and defiled. We still here? So you gotta watch what you say, people. You gotta watch what we say. Taste the words. And not only taste the words, I have heard many persons who say they curse. Now, the truth is, we know all the curse words, not true? Sorry, sorry. Some of them may be, may be new now. Maybe new. Right? Some of them may be new. But we know all of them. But when we get in a bad position, we don't use them. But when you know use the words now, according to my mind, um, Paul and Ephesians that are foul and abusive, no, sir. That's not Christian speaking at all. No. You're not supposed to go there. Don't care how angry you get, you're not supposed to go there. Angry and sin not. So, the Christian then is supposed to control his or her self. And, not only that, 
the Christian is also under the spirit that is in them control. That makes sense? The spirit on your side of you is controlling your speech and your actions and how you operate and function with people. I'm not saying that you won't do things that are wrong, but just say sorry and get and go from there. But I'm saying that this is not supposed to be where we live. Now, it may be fashionable for us to entertain what is not holy. Not for me. I, I think that we should be straightly arrows. I'm not saying that we should be mean. I'm not saying that we are not supposed to be loving people. And I'm saying that we should have a standard that is very high. Extremely high. Because of who we have on the inside of us. Do not ever walk about the place not knowing or remembering that you have the Holy Spirit of God in you. What about your private parts, though? Haven't mentioned those? Are those holy? Can I call the word? Is the penis holy? I will hope so. So it means then that it should be kept safe until it is allowed to be used. That's PG. I want to get frank with you too as well. The vagina is supposed to be kept safe until it is allowed to be used. It's a temple. All of me is supposed to glorify God. So the question is asked again, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you had from God, and you are not your own? You were brought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So therefore, look at your other members, man. You have your hands, you have your feet. You name the members that you have. So, our temple is to be holy at all times. You're supposed to be holy when you're single. Serve God with all your heart when you're single. And it's supposed to be holy when you are married. So in every aspect of life, be holy and be set apart for God. That's all the Bible here is saying. I want us to be in our heads because I believe if we understand this, this will change the way how we view everything about life. How we operate, how we function in everything.